currently, you're on your way to a suspicious location sent to you in a suspicious email that you got because you accepted a suspicious job offer online. Long story short, you've been desperate for money, especially fast money. But you don't even know what your job is yet, just where you have to go. But you do know that it's supposed to be simple and does not require any particular skills or talent. So perfect for somebody like, are you calling me talentless? Are you calling me a scrub? Well, I'll have you know that you might be right on that. You might be right. And yes, this is all extremely shady, but your desperation outweighs your common sense at this moment. You need money and the job offered a lot of it. And aside from that, half the money you already got in cash by randomly finding it in a suitcase inside your bedroom one day. So with the promise of doubling that money and the alarming fact your mysterious client easily broke into your house are big motivators to actually go through with this odd job. Whoever your client is, they know where you live. Ominous. Once you arrive, you notice that the job is at a rundown looking hotel in the middle of nowhere. Very reassuring. There's also no signal on your phone. Even more reassuring. In front of the hotel, you find a box with your name on it. You open it and find a walkie-talkie and a small tablet. You also find the second half of the money. Oh my god, I could really pay all my debts with this. You take the money and count it. It feels so incredibly good to have that much cash in your hands. Buzz. Hello, dear business partner. You have six... You have accepted the full sum of the money and are now obligated to carry out the job you have accepted. Oh, uh, hello. What's the job? Looks like you'll be communicating through this walkie-talkie throughout your job. How weird. Your first task is to enter the hotel. Uh, enter the rundown shady looking hotel in the middle of the- I know that this will lead to a bad end, but I'm going to run away with the money. You get cold feet and turn around. You're rich now! I don't want to risk being unable to spend it all by dying during a shady job. Dearest business partner, please turn around and enter the hotel. Otherwise, you will have to get eliminated for being in breach of contract. Eliminate it? You suddenly see a red dot on your body that moves up to your forehead. Are you gonna get shot? Uh, go back and enter the rundown shady looking hotel in the middle of nowhere. No, nah, it's probably just a laser pointer. You continue running away. No way they actually have a gun. It's probably a laser pointer or something to trick you. You can't fool me! Uh, okay? Business partner number 835 is in breach of contract for refusing to complete a task assigned to them. Business partner number 835 will be executed. Was I shot? Did I die? A solitary crack echoes through the air as the bullet buries itself through your skull from a clean headshot. Your death is fast and painless. You die thinking you're rich and will live a debt-free, fulfilling life. Headshot ending. Get rich and die trying! <laughs> fine, fine, I'll enter the shading looking hotel. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, eh? You enter the rundown, shady looking hotel in the middle of nowhere. As soon as you enter, the door behind you locks itself shut. Hey! You find yourself standing in a corridor with five doors, two on each side, and a big fancy looking entrance at the far end. It probably leads to the rest of the hotel. Buzz. Thank you for completing your first task. You have already survived longer than three quarters of our business partners before- Did they all get shot? Three quarters? Your chances of survival do not look good on this job. What have you gotten yourself into? Welcome to our hotel. Before you proceed, allow me to warn you regarding the special conditions of your next task. You will not be working with humans, but with monsters. Therefore, caution is advised. Is this a joke? The large door at the end is locked. You will not be able to enter it, as you are not a guest at this hotel. The four rooms in this corridor are currently occupied by guests and are accessible to you. However, we need them vacant for reasons we will not disclose. 
The reasons are unimportant to you and are not needed to complete your task. You will act as a mediator and persuade the monsters to leave their rooms, which they currently refuse to do so. Pause, pause. Are they actually monsters? What does that even mean? Are we talking like figuratively or like actually monsters? Upon successfully convincing a monster to vacate their room, you will gain access to their information sheet on the tablet provided to you. But wouldn't it be more helpful to have the information sheet before I try to persuade them, especially if they're actual monsters? Correct. However, the entertainment value increases in correlation with the difficulty and challenges encountered during your job. What? Who's getting entertained by me struggling to get monsters out of their hotel rooms? It, don't tell me it's you guys. Are, are you guys getting entertained by this? Don't you want me to finish the job as fast as possible? Come on, give me their information, please. No. Best of luck with the completion of your task. Goodbye. Wait! Uh, hello? No more answers from the walkie-talkie. You're on your own now. So there's supposed to be a monster in these hotel rooms? You still don't know what exactly the walkie-talkie meant by monsters. The front door is barricaded, the windows are like... The windows are too, and the big door at the end is locked too. It won't budge. And even if you did try to run away, who knows what they'll do to you. They know who you are. They know where you live. And you don't seem to be their first business partner either. And they seem to be watching your every move. From where? You don't even know. <sighs> I guess I'll just try and finish this fast. And preferably not die in the process. Which hotel room should you check first? Uh, okay. I know for a fact that the only room that's available to us is room one, but I'm curious to see what happens if we pick anything else. Blue room two. The best cloud of all time. Coming soon. Yellow room three. The angel. Coming soon. Purple room. Loyal knight. Coming soon. Right, fine. Let's go for number one then. The door looks like it's been repaired over and over again, but it looks quite sturdy nonetheless. Uh, there have been many modifications made to make it more secure. Enter room red... 001? Yeah, of course. You enter room 001. Huh. Neat. As soon as you enter, the door behind you locks. Hey! Looks like you won't get to leave until you vacate the room. You look around in confusion. There's printouts, notes, and pictures scattered all over the room's walls. It looks unsettling. But you don't see any guests here. Yet. Or a monster. Or whatever you're supposed to find here. Hello? Why did it go dark? Duh! Thud. Not even five seconds in, you suddenly get knocked out and fall to the floor. Everything goes black. Are you really getting murdered already? You didn't even manage to survive 10 minutes! This sucks! But to your surprise, you start coming to your senses again after some time. You wake up, still in the same spot you got knocked out at. Looks like you're still alive, at least. Ah! Your head hurts. Ah, you're finally awake. My... Super stuck. Freddy Fazbear? Uh, huh? Ah, close enough. Close enough. An intimidating man is towering over you, staring you down. He must be at least two meters tall and looks like he'd slam you against the wall with a single slap. Yes, please! Ow. He looks scary, but aside from his monstrous height, he doesn't look that much like an actual monster. You try and discern what his face looks like to see if it looks human, but you can barely make out anything, and with how well it's concealed by its outfit. I'm so glad we finally get to meet. Huh? Y you know me. I do. My life is meaningless without you. Who is he? I, I don't know you. Are you the one that knocked me out? Yes, I am. Sorry about that. <laughs> I only noticed who you were after I knocked you out. 
I'm used to a certain pest always trying to break into my room, so I just automatically attacked. <laughs> you laugh at him nervously, hoping he won't attack you again. He stares at you, seemingly mesmerized. Do you actually know me? Of course I do. I am your biggest fan. I am- OH MY GOD I HAVE A FAN! You jump in excitement. Yes! Me! He jumps too. I'm so happy! I never thought I'd ever have even one single fan! Well, you do. You're my superstar. Your stories have changed my life. They have consumed me. They. They. Oh. <laughs> I can't even begin to describe how much impact they had on my life. Then why did you pull out that fire axe? Oh, why the axe? Holding my axe helps me calm down when I get too... <sighs> excited. <laughs> uh, okay? I'm so happy we finally get to meet. And you seem so happy to see me. I expected our first meeting to go very differently. Of course, I'd be happy to meet a fan of mine. The happiness is all mine. Nah, it's all mine. No, it's all mine. <sighs> oh, I'm getting too excited again. Sorry, I gotta calm down. <sighs> I have a question, though. About what? Uh, about you. Oh, about what I am? Why I won't leave my room? No, 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 about you specifically. You have a question about me? Yeah, can I ask it? Yes, yes you can! What? No, no, wait, 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 wait. I gotta calm down first. <sighs> Okay, okay, you can ask me now. My superstar. What do you want to know about me? About me personally? <laughs> I just wanted to know. No, wait. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm good now. Whew. Shoot your question, my superstar. <sighs> I just want to know what exactly you are. <laughs> <laughs> Slash crack? Ah! Ah, did, did, did you just swing your axe at me in excitement? He smashes his skull into your... He smashes the axe into your skull, breaking it in two. Then he swings it again. And again and again and again. He got too excited. He just can't help himself when he gets too excited. You are his superstar after all. And he is your biggest fan. Bad ending. Overstimulated! Okay, so I have a fan? I have a fan? Yes, me. He pulls out crinkled printouts of pages from a blog. But not just from any blog. From your... But I wrote that back in the 2010s! How? He's talking about my old Dumbler blog? How does he have to print it out? And in his pockets! Your writing is so amazing. It's like you're speaking straight to my soul. It spoke to me in a way no other story has. It touched something deep inside me. I'm not sure what it is, but there's something about your writing that resonates with me on a level that I can't explain. He's brimming with excitement. Staring at you without blinking and never breaking eye contact. <laughs> yeah, wow. Thank you for liking my old Kingdom Hearts fanfics. I'm I'm so happy about that. You're creeped out. Maybe you remember me. I used to comment under your posts all the time. I used to go as Nalzax404. Nalzax404. That was you? You remember me. He leans in closer and his breathing grows more labored. 
<laughs> of course you remember me, but it still gives me a rush hearing you say that. I mean, you were the only person that really commented or interacted with my blog. The comments of Nozag's 404 were long and unhinged. I always assumed it was a troll trying to mess with me or something. Gotta say though, I was surprised. After commenting so often and putting all my thoughts and emotions into them, I was waiting for the day you'd respond, proving to me that you did indeed see me, or at least acknowledging my existence. But you didn't. Instead, you did something real nasty. It felt like my world was falling apart. Huh? What? What did I do? You blocked... So, if I get this straight, this guy is a stalker from way back in 2010s and uh, I, I just didn't know about it? Oh, right. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think straight anymore. I thought about offing myself every day. Isn't that an excessively extreme reaction? But then, after months of wasting away, Getting closer and closer to the darkness inside me with no return, I realized... I could just make a new account! My guy! That's... true. But you kept blocking them, so I stopped commenting and just started lurking. But then, you did the most nastiest thing ever. What's that? You stopped writing. You stopped updating your blog. Well, I mean, it was mostly to kill time, like a hobby. A... a hobby? You really are amazing. You are so talented that you have the power to change my entire worldview with things you wrote as a hobby. Whenever I read through your stories, I felt like the happiest and most... <sighs> Stimulated person in the world. He seems to get even more excited. It makes you concerned. That's why, when you stopped writing, it broke my heart into 463,828,007 pieces. Why do you even have that axe? Ugh, I just. Get so worked up whenever I talk about you or your stories. Holding my axe helps me calm down. <laughs> Help! I can't live without your stories. I can't live without my superstar. Why did you stop? What happened? Why did my superstar leave me? Why? 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 I... I didn't... Anyways, after going back to being miserable, I start printing out all of his stories and posts and always had them with me. I also hung them up everywhere and wrote out my favorite sentences of yours. As you can see, do you like it? He started looking around closer at the papers and scribbles all over his room and walls. It's all printouts from your old Dumbler blog or quotes from it he wrote on the walls himself. He really is your biggest fan. And your only fan, too, as far as you're concerned. You couldn't bring yourself to be happy about it, though. Wait, boss! Uh, sorry. I started rambling. I'm just really excited right now. What is it, my superstar? How did you know I'm the author of that blog? I never posted any pictures or personal information of myself on that Dumbler blog. I know everything. I know what you like, where you live where you worked at, why you got fired, all of your social media accounts and emails, passwords and security questions and their answers, your medical history, your bank information. As he continues talking about how intensely he's been cyber-stalking you, you glance around the room nervously. It's not only your blog that's everywhere, but also bits and pieces of really private information or pictures of you. Now you're really starting to panic. I can't leave this place, this hotel. None of us can. So I had to use nothing but my computer and this hotel's horrible internet connection to find all of that out. But it made me feel closer to you. Closer to my superstar. It helped fill the void you left 
when he stops updating your blog. Uh, I am sorry about that? Oh, it's okay. I know life can get in the way of humans' artistic pursuits. Also, I did have so much information and dirt on you, I could have ruined your life in seconds. I didn't, of course. I was only sometimes tempted during my very, very dark moments, but I didn't, because what kind of fan would I be then if I let my own bitterness outweigh the love and admiration I have for you? <laughs> so, don't worry about it. <laughs> he stares at you, gripping his axe tightly to calm himself down. You need to finish your job and get out of here. Fast! Uh, promise me you'll ride again if he leaves his room. Find out why he doesn't want to leave this room. Ah, uh, well... I'm gonna go with number two. Like, let's find out why. I'm here for a specific reason, actually. Oh, I know. You're supposed to make me leave my room. <laughs> You're not the first one, you know. You're lucky I noticed you're my superstar. Before I really went down to business, I've been itching to use my axe, but I can also be a gentleman with self-control if I need to be. That is hard to believe. So why don't you want to leave your room? Why should I? Because then you're closer to finishing your job and can leave this godforsaken hotel. Because... Because you want to finish your job, obviously. Well... You'd be the first one to do so if you succeeded. Oh, no. What happened to the others? The business partners before me. <laughs> Depends on who they started with. Should I show you what I did to the last person trying to make me leave this room? Uh, yeah? <laughs> sure thing, my superstar. Follow me. You reluctantly follow him to a door secured by numerous locks. It takes some time until it gets it open. The room exudes a bone-chilling atmosphere. It looks and smells like death. I like to keep my dirty hobbies and passions in a separate room. Keeps the rest of my apartment clean. Anyway, first, I knock them on the head with the back of my axe, just like it did with you. Then, I throw them into this room and lock the door. And then... Uh, and then what? Then I kill them. With my axe. Oh. That's what I expected, I guess. I am a simple man. I don't need to turn my passions into some overcomplicated philosophical bull. Like some other annoying people. I see. Focus on the job. You have to get out of here as soon as possible. So, are these people the reason you don't want to leave your room? Yes. Part of it. It's okay to feel judged. How about you talk it out with them? <laughs> my superstar and my therapist. Well, I'll be a therapist if you really need it. And if it makes him leave his room. I'd like you to be something else, though. Something more... M m more... You don't want him to finish that sentence. More like a platonic friend! <laughs> I... I got friend-zoned? I... I mean... Oh, don't worry. I'm fine! I swear! Just ignore your final flight reaction and focus on the job. Okay, so about leaving your room? Not happening. Damn it! You need more to go on. What exactly are you? Are you, uh... Human? No, I am a monster. Didn't the walkie-talkie tell you? Yeah, but what kind of monster? I only know what I found out myself. I'm stronger than any human I axed and any weapon they've attacked me with. One of them even shot me once, blew half my brain out, but I was fine the next day, and it didn't even hurt. Just felt a bit dizzy and disoriented after a few seconds. I don't starve either, but I can eat if I want to. Some food is pretty tasty. Also, I hate go- I hate the whole going to the toilet thing afterwards. Ah, what else? I love axing things so much. That might just be a personality trait. I guess you might be a zombie. Maybe. 
Or a ghost of a body. Could be. Or just immortal. Until now, nothing's been able to kill me. So I'll believe that until I'm proven wrong. Uh, why else aren't you leaving your room? Because I really don't know why they want us out of our room so badly. At least I don't know the real reason. But I do know that it must be something I won't agree with. Why is that? Because I've never agreed with their choices. Who's they? <laughs> I told you, my superstar. I don't know. We're out of the loop about almost anything in here. That's why I refuse to do anything they ask me to. There must be a reason they don't tell us anything, and I don't like that. Besides, I'm happy with staying in my room. I never really have a reason to leave, and since people keep getting sent to this hotel to make us get out of our rooms, there's always new skulls I can axe and break. Uh, who's paying me to do this? Who's paying me to, for this job? Are they the same person that owns this hotel? Either way, they must be rich to be able to give me so much cash. I don't know. I don't care. I've been in this hotel for as long as I can remember. But once I found your blog, I didn't have any interest besides axing people I knew anyways. You've never been outside this hotel? No. I can't leave the building. None of us can. Really? Have you ever tried? Only once, but the others tried many, many times. It's like there's an invisible wall around the hotel that prevents us from leaving. What the? That's weird. Do you remember how you got here? No. Do you know how long you've been living here? No. He doesn't seem interested in how or why he got here. Then, do you know the reason the walkie-talkie voice wants the rooms vacant? No. Well... We did get a reason, but I don't buy it one bit. Something about our rooms getting renovated or clean. <laughs> they were so pushy about it. And once, they even started sending humans in here to make us leave. It was obvious something was up. So now, none of us want to leave our rooms. Or at least, that's mostly the reason I don't. You wonder why they sent people like you in here to get them out of their rooms? Whoever is behind all this seems quite powerful after all. Why do they need random nobodies like you? Maybe it has something to do with the entertainment value of the walkie-talkie mentioned in the beginning. That thought scares you. What if you're being set up to fail so somebody else can laugh his butt off while watching you? After all, according to your biggest fan, you'll be the first one to actually finish this job. If you do manage to do that. Uh, don't you want to find out more about yourself? You say you don't care, but aren't you at least a, t a tiny bit curious? About why you're here, how you got here, or even who or what exactly you are? Huh. No. He's a simple lad, and I love him. Oh. Well, then... Aren't you angry you can't leave the hotel? You say you like it here, but it's still pretty rude to not even give you the option to leave, right? Huh. Yeah, it's pretty annoying to think about how that walkie-talkie voice seems to have so much control over me and the other monsters. There might be a way to retaliate, but I doubt you'll find anything if you... If I stay at my room? Yeah! <laughs> so... You leaving the room? No. You groan in annoyance. <laughs> it's not the best you can do. I'm never gonna leave my room at this point. Guess you'll have to stay trapped in here with me. Your biggest fan. Forever. You don't want that! I like to get I like to get out of here at some point though! I bet I can change your mind, my superstar. Oh, how exactly? No thanks? <laughs> Say please until he leaves until he leaves his room. Promise you'll write again if he leaves his room. Say it will be so attractive if he left. I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna go with that? Uh, you, it will be so attractive. You know, it will be so attractive if you left your room for me. R really? Wow, that worked faster than you thought. You said I'm a superstar. I'd really feel like your superstar if you help me finish my job and leave your room for me. You bat your eyelashes at him. 
Huh. Y you're just saying that. No, I'm not. Oh, that dumpy! Where is your dumpy? Okay. I'll do it. For my... My one... And only superstar. To make you... Happy. <sighs> this was so easy! Really? Just for me? Oh, thank you so much. You're so attractive to me right now. <laughs> You're welcome. And you'll be so much more attractive once you actually leave your room. Uh, I'll leave right now. <sighs> Anything for my superstar. You did it. You persuaded your biggest fan to leave his room. Red room one persuasion successful. You may now leave the red room. Please now proceed with your job until all four rooms are vacant. New information sheet unlocked. Press escape to go to the gallery to view it. Okay, thank you. You leave the room and go back to the main hallway. Right. Okay. We're going to need to go back because none of the other rooms are available yet. So what if I say please until he leaves? Can you leave a room? Please, 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 please. No. Please. No. Please, please, please! No. Please, 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 please! No. Please! <laughs> no. You won't give up. Uh, uh, I will continue! Please, 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 please! No. Please! No. Pretty please! No. Please! No. Please! No. You won't give up! <laughs> please, 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 please! No. Please! No. Please! No. Please? No. <laughs> you seem disappointed, my superstar. I am not disappointed. What? You won't give up. Even you, if you have to get mo the most dramatic and annoying you've ever gotten. I'm not disappointed. I'm desperate. Please, I am begging you with every fiber of my being. Begging you to please, please leave your room. It's tearing at my soul. I can't take it anymore. Please. I just see the desperation in my eyes. Hear it in my voice. I'm on my knees. My heart breaking. I can't bear another moment of this torment. You have the power to end it. To be the one who saves me from this abyss. If you stay. If you don't leave. You're not just disregarding my plea. You're becoming the architect of my despair. The orchestrates are my agony, so please! I'm begging you. Don't let that happen. Don't become the worst person in my world. Do you understand what you're doing to me? Can't you see the pain in my eyes? I'm on the edge here! And you're pushing me off the damn cliff! Please! Just leave the room already. Please! I'm begging you! Please! No. <laughs> oh my god, I dropped the whole speech and he still won't! Ah, please, please, bleh! Okay, okay, fine, hell! Really? You leave the room. <sighs> <laughs> yes. I'll do it. I'll do it. For my one and only superstar. I did it? I persuaded my biggest fan to leave his room? Yeah, okay, I know. It's successful. Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, I got information. I'm curious, what happens if I try to re-enter room 001? I know I should have tried it earlier, but what happens? 
Okay, yeah, let's enter. You enter room 01. Does it reset the whole thing? Huh. Oh, I think it does reset the encounter. Okay, I'm curious. What happens if we say we'll promise to write again if he leaves? What? Really? You'd start writing again? Yeah. Wow. Blah. But don't stop, okay? If I get to read your stories again for the first time, then you stop writing again. I don't think I'll be able to handle that. So, don't ever stop writing again, or I'll have to punish you. I don't want to. I swear, I don't. <laughs> but I'll have to. He's shaking with... You don't really know what he's feeling at the moment. Punish me? I have been a naughty boy, though. I mean, like, if you want to punish me now, I don't mind it. <laughs> of course. You'd be ruining my life a second time. You didn't do it on purpose the first time. So that's why I'm not bitter. I'm not. I swear. <laughs> but you know how much your writing means to me now. You know you're my superstar. So there absolutely has to be consequences. This is risky. But he also can't seem to leave this hotel. For now, you'll just play along to finish your job and exit this godforsaken hotel. Okay, sure. So you promise to keep on writing? Yeah. <sighs> Excellent. Do you want to know what would happen if you said no? Uh, yeah? <laughs> I would have been very sad. Oh. I also would have cried. Oh. But I would have also turned around, so you wouldn't have known. So every time you turn around, were you crying? So what was that? Oh, my big baby. I'd also like another small favor from you, my superstar. Can you write your stories here in my room on my typewriter? I got it because I knew that one day I'd get to meet you. And I've always dreamt of having you right here in my room on an old typewriter because they look cool to me. And you're cool to me. The coolest. You're my superstar after all. And wouldn't that be the perfect cool combo? It can't get any cooler than that, right? The coolest combo of all time. And also, can you not publish your stories from now on? Can you leave them here in my room so only I can read it? I'm the only person who's truly able to appreciate and cherish your stories. No one else understands them the way I do. Also, I know there's a bunch of weirdos on the internet, so... I like to make sure no creeps read your stories and then get obsessed with you and start stalking you and finding out everything about you and make the whole purpose in life about you. I'm sorry, but like, you, you, you've been beaten out by way too many people. I'm just gonna say that. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much this means to me. I really am your biggest fan, you know. Do you know that? Do you know that you mean more to me than my own life? Yeah, I do. Excellent. He grins widely. Also. Oh no. Can you stay here until you finish your first story? I promise. I'll leave the room once you finish your first story. I want to watch you write. Watch you create what gives my life purpose. Because if you leave before writing your story, you'll definitely report me to the police first. And then I go to jail. And in jail, I wouldn't get to read your stories anymore. Or at least, it will be harder to get to read them. And also, they wouldn't let me print out your stories and personal information and place them all over my cell. How else am I supposed to look at them whenever I want to? That would make me sad. Uh, but wait, how would they even put me in prison if I could leave the hotel? Maybe they'll turn the hotel into a prison then. Well, either way, it's the same outcome. It will complicate things and I hate when things get complicated. You don't really know what to say, so you just you just let him talk until he's done. Also, I know it might seem scary to you since I'm uns I'm unstable and homicidal and have killed literally every other human that came into my room except for you. But I just get a little too passionate sometimes, and I didn't have myself under control like half the time. So that's a lot. If I didn't, then trust me, I am holding back. A lot right now. A lot. 
why are you holding back? Why? Because I don't want you to hate me. If my superstar hates me, I would die. Why would you die? I don't know. I certainly wouldn't be able to live. But you don't hate me, right? You're just scared and fear. I can work with that. You'll see who I really am with time. Fear can be temporary, but hate, hate lingers. You don't hate me, right? <sighs> right? I don't, I'm just scared. <sighs> yes, just scared. I can tell. <laughs> Sorry, I'll calm down. Like I said, fear is fine. I'm glad you don't hate me. I would hate for my superstar to hate me, their biggest fan. I would go insane. <laughs> anyway, on to more important things. I'll prepare the typewriter and desk. My desk is too messy for you to write right now. He throws the stuff clogging his desk to the side and makes room for you. I'm so glad you agreed to write again. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. I'm gonna die of happiness. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not actually gonna die. Because I go to hell and you go to heaven. So I never see you again. I hate thinking about death. I'll just never die. Dying is embarrassing. Anyways, make sure the story is long. And don't stop until you're done writing. You always wrote your stories in one setting. That's why they're so amazing. You have so much creative stamina. That's because they were n never longer than two pages. And yet, they had so much substance. You truly are amazing. You truly are my superstar. You wrote your stories between word breaks whenever you were bored. They never meant anything. Also, don't forget to make me the main character again, because the stories where I'm the main character were always my favorites. What is he talking about? Does he actually think I wrote my stories about him? Remember, the love interest in your stories always had a name similar to Nozax 404, which was Nick, has the same starting letter N and also four letters, which is a reference to 404. You weren't subtle at all. <laughs> and it means a lot to me that you put me, your biggest fan, in your stories. He's completely delusional! And you even put me as the love interest. <sighs> anyway, right. Okay. I'll shut up now and just watch you. Watch you write. Watch you. <sighs> <laughs> You'll write a story with three pages about whatever comes to your mind at the moment. That's how you always wrote your stories. You understand me. We have a connection. A bond that no one else has. You understand my obsession and my love. I... Didn't he say he'd shut up? I don't want to lose that. I'm nothing without you. So even when you finish one story, start another, and another, and another, and then another. And also... Make me the hero again, and the love interest, of course. And also put yourself in the story, and then make me propose to you, and you say yes, and then... Got it! I got it! Excellent. Okay, I'll shut up for real now. <sighs> he stares at you while you write, unblinking. When you think about it, you've never seen him blink a single time till now. <sighs> I have to tell you something. God damn it! Something that might surprise you. What is it? This might come to you as a shock, but... I'm... I'm in love with... <laughs> I could tell! No, duh! You open your mouth and let out a big gasp. Yes, I love you. And I can't live without you. You are my soulmate. And we were meant to find each other. So yes... I love you. You might say I'm obsessed with you, which is definitely true, but love and obsession are two sides of the same coin, or, or something. You don't know what to say as you just sit there awkwardly. 
It's okay. You don't need to say anything. Just keep on writing. I don't need much from you except to know that I'm the most important thing in your life and you've already shown me that through your actions. I did? Yes, by putting me in your stories, indirectly mentioning me in your social media posts, eating at places and watching movies that almost fit my taste. Even now, that outfit you're wearing, it's exactly the sort of outfit I would love. They can't be a coincidence. What a flattering thing to do, to wear that specific outfit because you knew I, your biggest fan, would like it so much. Also, I don't know why I make him sound like, uh, like a gruff fear Kira. I, I don't know why. I'll continue writing now. Yes, continue. That outfit suits you well. <sighs> oh, sorry. I'll shut up now. You continue writing, actually try to get this story done as soon as possible. Also, what is it? You can just use Nick again. For the name of the love interest. I know I'm supposed to be Nick anyways. <laughs> also, make him mysterious and tall and handsome like me. And then the main character, you, has to fall in love with me for no reason. You said the main character was supposed to be Nick! You can't make these changes on the typewriter! Like, I'm gonna need to start over from the beginning! Is that what you want? Is that what you want? You are ruining the process! Also, let's be a long... It has to be a long and dramatic story. Not short, like usual. I've been missing your stories for such a long time. A story of two pages just won't cut it. Got it? Yes! Excellent. <sighs> Thank you so much. He continues to stare at you like an unhinged maniac, intensifying your discomfort with each passing minute. Also, can you write the entire story in a single, long sitting, and then I'll read it as soon as possible without you proofreading it or anything, because I want the raw version. It's for my mental health, and can you make it extra long? I need it to be as long as possible. At least 100 pages long. I would like to be able to live inside it. Can, please, can you do that for me, Superstar? A hundred pages? Yes, at least. It's for my mental health. I am un- How the about I fix your mental health by bashing this typewriter into your head? I know, this might come as a shock to you since I seem like such a mysterious and handsome gentleman, but I am actually a bit unstable. Yeah, I am so shocked. <laughs> I need the story. The story will make or break me. It will save me or it will destroy me. The only thing keeping me away from snapping completely is your writing, so I need you to try your hardest, okay? I mean, you wouldn't want to send me over the edge, right? Ah, uh, let's settle on ten pages. Ten pages isn't enough. I need at least a hundred, but ideally ten thousand. But you can start with a hundred for now, since I'm a gentleman. I need it. I need it to live. I need to live inside your story for as long as possible. Please. It's only a hundred pages. Is that really too much to ask for? You are sounding like a... You're sounding like a design client. Yes? But ten, page, but ten pages is just a few minutes of reading. You can't keep me from going insane with just a few minutes of your stories. A hundred pages, please. A hundred pages minimum. Please. I need it. I know I'm being pushy, but I really, really, really need it. You've deprived me of your stories for so long. And I'm not bitter about it at all. I swear. <laughs> but I'm so close to the edge. Please stand, stop edging. Fix me, my superstar. Fix me with your stories. You can fix me, right? It's not over for me, right? I felt like your stories almost fixed me, and and I'm sure they would have, if only you didn't st uh, stop writing. Please, please, I, I can't. I've never written that much before and in one sitting. I can't. Maybe if you can wait for. You have to. He grabs you by the collar. You don't get to give me hope. Make me believe you can save me. Make me believe you can fix me, only to disappear at the last moment. It's not fair. Uh, let me go. Try to punch and scratch at him in panic, but he easily counters you. 
Even when you do hit him, it doesn't seem to bother him at all. Your writing means more to me than my life. But even so, I think I've been a bit too polite to you so far. You're my superstar. My reason for living. No doubt about that. But you're only human at the end of the day. And humans can be a real bitch sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is treat you like a bitch whenever you're acting like a bitch. And guess what? Right now, you're acting like a freaking bitch. From now on, you'll write however many pages I want, and you will write exactly what I tell you to write. Is that clear? My superstar? Screw you! You spit in his face. <laughs> I am so in love with you. Please, fix me. Please. Oh no, you're, you're broken beyond repair, butthole! <sighs> Should I just say that to you? Get under my skin. You are. The rage and adrenaline you're feeling right now makes you want to hurt him so badly. You're unfixable. The only thing that could fix you is a miracle. And like you said, I'm just a normal human who can't do miracles. Now let me go. You freaking <sighs> bitch. He grabs you by the throat. God damn it, Mom, screw you. Even if I could fix you, I wouldn't want to. If anything, I want to break you even more. If that's even possible, you butthole. <laughs> break me even more. Yes. <sighs> Not if I break you first. Crack. You want to scream, but your voice fails you. The only thing coming out are pitiful gurgling sounds. It hurts. I... I love you. I, I'm sorry. I... can't... help myself. Snap. He's crying. Crack. Bye. No. You're right that I can't be fixed, but you made it possible for me to at least pretend there was hope for me. And at some point, I actually start to believe it, to believe in myself. Maybe I could, I could be f fixed. Snap. You hear sobbing. Thud. Your body, limp and mangled, falls to the floor. He broke you. You're beyond repair right now. Just like him. Two broken people. What if I said, say please? Say please? Please? Screw you! <laughs> he spit his face. I'm pretty sure all this goes more or less the same, so, uh, okay, fine. Okay, fine, let me go. He lets go of your collar. Uh, so you'll do it? Right, I'll do it. Yes, 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 yes! Thank you so much. I knew you'd do this for me. I'm your biggest fan. I'm so happy. So, so 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 happy you turn on the typewriter and ignore his creepy staring and labored breathing the stories he's so obsessed with are nothing but random nonsense you came up with on the fly whenever you were bored it's clear he's delusional you figure he'll just eat up whatever you write so you come up with something you can easily write a hundred pages off in one sitting one day i was waiting for the bus i got thirsty but to my horror i forgot my water at home but oh no 
Then a mysterious and handsome man named Nick sensed my thirst and need to quench it and offered me his water bottle. We fell in love and once the bus arrived, Nick went on one knee and proposed to me. I screamed in shock and joy and my scream went like this. Ah! <laughs> it just keeps going! You continue, pressing the A button repeatedly. You do this for the longest time until you manage to fill up a hundred pages. Ninety-nine of it are just filled with a scream of shock and joy. You get up from the desk. God, your finger hurts. I'm done. He immediately snatches the hundred pages from your hand, his gaze turning deranged and intense as he reads over them. He seems completely immersed as he reads. You feel nervous, highly doubting that one of your stupid stories will actually fix him or whatever his delusions tell him is going to happen. And then, how will he react? What will he do to you? And... So... Beautiful... <laughs> this was beautiful to you? Thank God. I'm glad. It's your best piece of art yet. I'm speechless. Words can't possibly describe what I'm feeling. What the story means to me. So you're fixed now or whatever it is you want it? <laughs> no. Ah! Don't worry. It's okay. This already felt so... So amazing. And even though I'm not fixed, you've given me new hope for the future again. As expected from my superstar. Yay, so like, you leave your room now. You leave your room now, right? That was a deal. <laughs> Will I? Come on, we made a deal. Yes, we did. I'm just screwing with you. I'll see you outside. <laughs> you really are my superstar. I somehow did it. I persuaded my biggest fan to leave his room. And my finger is the only victim in all this. Also, like, the bruises on my neck. God. Right. What if it said I didn't hate him and that I'm not scared? <laughs> you don't have to lie. I can sense it. Like your increased heart rate, for example. Uh, that's not fear. No. Then what is it? It's... Damn, do you really want to do this? I'm thrilled you are so totally doing this thrilled talking to me feels thrilling to you yes really this must actually work oh my god what yeah you're cute he seems speechless your back is cute too i like the pattern you got going on in your jacket suits you so well Ugh, i saw it I finally got to meet my superstar, but now I know this is all just a dream again. I know I'm waking up any moment. You're not dreaming. Here, I'll show you. You pinch him. Whoa. You are so weak and so adorable. You're uh, more adorable. Wow, you really can't handle compliments, huh? I never got any... Let me alone from my one and only superstar. There's so many things. There's so many things I could compliment about you, though. Don't. Please, stop. I don't want to do anything that... I, I gotta calm down. But you never hurt your one and only superstar, right? I, I would never. I would never want to. You are the only thing I have. Without you, I am... I am nothing. <laughs> he seems to be losing control. He's shaking as his, and his breathing is getting more and more labored. L oh, I touch him. You step closer and place your hand on his chest. Stop. I don't want to. <sighs> and I don't want to. 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 To what? <sighs> <sighs> That was slash crack? Ah! Ah! He smashes an axe into my skull, breaking it in two. He swings it again and again and again and again. He got too excited. He just can't help himself when he gets too excited. You are his superstar after all. And he is your biggest fan. 
He got overstimulated again. <laughs> I will leverage my safety. That's right. Without me, you have nothing. So you better not do anything you're going to regret. Yeah. I, you are so unfair. Stop making me so. Are you going to kill me? I don't want to. I do. What? Kill me. No! Do it. Shut up! Do it! You need to shut up. Yeah, I'm actually gonna do it. Kill me so I can be gone forever. Kill your one and only superstar. No! So you can't be near me right now? I can't. Then leave. Huh? Leave the room. I don't want to leave the room! You come closer. Ugh! What do you want more? To not leave the room or to not kill me? <sighs> My superstar. I need you more than anything. You're so unfair. <laughs> Bye! I did it! Right, what if I do say I hate him? What? I hate you. <laughs> My superstar is such a kidder. I'm not kidding. What? You... You really hate me. Yes. But... No, 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 no! You... You really... Hates me. He seems terrified. Yeah, I hate you. I... I mean... I I know you wouldn't like me, but I know I'm not the most likable fan. I know I seem really scary, but, but please, please don't hate me. Please, please. I'd no. Shut up. Stop talking. <laughs> I I I can't take this. I can't take this! Slash crap! Again! I got, he got overstimulated! Anyway, that was Monster X Mediator. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. We will be back once more of the rooms have been released. But I gotta say, though, I did enjoy this game. Um, It's what I would expect out of a head locker game. Like... They were the same developers behind Creature in the Corner and Robert Guest. So it's just as absurd as I would have hoped it would be. And honestly, like, God, I, I'm really excited to see what the other routes are like. And why are we stuck in this hotel? But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.